In this module, we're going to discuss part one of salads and salad dressings. We're going to specifically talk about salads and how they're composed. The objectives for this module are identify a variety of salad greens, prepare a variety of salad dressings, which we will do in part two, explain the procedures for preparing tossed, bound, and composed salads, prepare a variety of salads using leafy greens as well as fruits, grains, potatoes, and vegetables, and present salads attractively. A salad is a single food, or a mix of different foods accompanied by or bound by a dressing. Harmony is critical to a salad's success. It's not a green leafy salad without some kind of creamy dressing or something acidic or tangy to go along with it. So you want to always think about harmony and balance when dealing with a salad. The color, texture, and flavor of each ingredient should complement the others. And salad greens are not necessarily just leafy greens. Some are red, yellow, white, or brown. Some don't even have greens at all in them. Some may be pasta salads or a protein-based salad. Before we can talk about the different kinds of lettuce, we have to first decide what lettuce is. Lettuce has been consumed for nearly as long as people have kept records of their dining habits. Archaeologists have found that Persian royalty were served lettuce at the banquets more than 2,500 years ago. Grown and served worldwide, lettuces are members of the genus Lactua, and most common type of lettuce are butterhead, crisphead, leaf lettuce, and romaine. Boston and bib lettuces are two of the most popular butterhead lettuces. They're soft, pliable, green, pale green leaves, have a buttery texture and flavor. Boston is larger and paler than bib. Both Boston and bib lettuces leave leaves form cups when separated from the heads. These cups make convenient bases for holding other foods on cold plates, commonly grown hydroponically, which is why you see the root ball look so clean. Iceberg lettuce is the most common of all the lettuce varieties in the United States. It outsells all other varieties combined, although its appeal is declining now that other types of greens are widely available. Iceberg's tightly packed spherical head is composed of crisp, pale green leaves that have very mild flavor. Iceberg lettuce remains crisp for a relatively long time after being cut or prepared. Select heads that are firm but not hard and leaves that are free of burnt or rusty tips. Leaf lettuce is grown in bunches. It has separate ruffled edged leaves branching from the stalk. Because it doesn't grow into a firm head, it's easily damaged when handled. Both red and green leaf lettuces have mild flavor and tender leaves. Good quality leaf lettuce leaves should have nicely shaped leaves free from bruises, breaks, or brown spots. Romaine lettuce, also sometimes referred to as cos, is a loosely packed head lettuce with elongated leaves and thick midribs. Its outer leaves are dark green, and although they, cook they look coarse, they are crisp, tender, and tasty without being bitter. The core leaves are paler and more tender, but still crisp. Romaine has enough flavor to stand up to strongly flavored dressings, such as the garlic and parmesan cheese used in Caesar salad. Small heads can be grilled. A good quality head of romaine has dark green outer leaves that are free of blemishes or yellowing. Baby lettuce or baby greens have similar but more subtle flavors than their mature versions. They are often less bitter and are always more tender and delicate. Because of their size and variety, baby lettuces are perfect for composed salads as a delicate garnish on light entrees. Mescaline is a mixture of several kinds of baby lettuces, often referred to as spring mix, let spring mix lettuce. Some common varieties of baby head lettuce, Brundeev, Lola Rosa, Red Sails, Baby Green Bib, Baby Red Oak, Pirate, Baby Red Bib, Baby Romaine. 
Microgreens are even smaller than baby lettuces. They are the first true leaves of virtually any edible greens, such as lettuce, spinach, kale, and so on. Microgreens are very fragile and must be hand-picked and carefully packaged for shipping. Chefs use them as a garnish, especially on entrees and appetizer plates. Chicory is a slightly different category of lettuces. Chicories come in a variety of colors, shapes, and sizes. Most are slightly bitter. Chicories are quite hardy and can be cooked, usually grilled and braised. Belgian endive grows in small, tight heads with pointed leaves. It's actually the shoots of a chicory root. The small, sturdy leaves are white at the base with yellow fringes and tips. The purple tip variety is sometimes also available. Whole Belgian endive leaves can be separated, trimmed, and filled with soft butters, cheeses, or spreads and served as an hors d'oeuvre. Or they can be used to make composed salads. The leaves, cut or whole, can be added to cold salads as well. Heads of Belgian endive are often braised or grilled and served with meat or poultry. In the United States, curly endive is often called by its family name, chicory, or its French name, frise. The dark green outer leaves are pointed, sturdy, and slightly bitter. The yellow inner leaves are more tender and less bitter. Curly endive has a strong flavor that goes well with strong cheeses, game, and citrus. It's mixed with other greens to add texture and flavor. Escarole, sometimes called broadleaf endive, has thick leaves and a slightly bitter flavor. It has green outer leaves and a pale green or yellow leaf center leaves. Escarole is very sturdy and is mixed with other salad greens, often for added texture. Because of its strong flavor also, this added uh, bitterness will help to even out and temper the more sweet greens such as iceberg. Its strong flavor stands up to full flavored dressings and is a good accompaniment to grilled meats and poultry. Escarole leaves may also be cooked in soup and salad dishes or pasta dishes uh, or slightly or lightly sauteed as a side dish even. Radicchio resembles a small red cabbage. It retains its bright reddish color when cooked and is popular braised or grilled and served as a vegetable side dish. Because of its attractive color, radicchio is popular, popular in cold salads, but is very bitter flavor and should be used very sparingly and mixed with other greens and tossed salads. Radicchio leaves form cups when separated and can be used to hold other ingredients when preparing composed salads. On a personal note, this is my least favorite of all the greens because it is extremely bitter and if not mixed with sweet greens uh, it can be overpowering and even sometimes mixed with sweet greens it can still be overpowering. Arugula, also known as rocket, is a member of the cabbage family. Arugula leaves are sometimes are somewhat similar to broad dandelion leaves in size and shape. They're best when two to four inches long. Uh, arugula has a very strong spicy peppery flavor. It's used to add zip to salads by combining it with other greens and as a fresh topping on cheesy pizza. This is probably one of my personal favorite greens because of its pepperiness. I'll often pair this with something like a uh, black pepper honey vinaigrette. Dandelion, that's right dandelion, grown as a weed throughout most of the United States. It has long, thin tooth leaves with a prominent midrib. When purchasing dandelion for salads, look for small leaves. They're more tender and less bitter. Older, tougher leaves can be cooked and served as a vegetable. If you harvest these on your own, be very careful and pay particular attention to washing them because obviously they are often uh, interacted with with uh, animals in the wild. Mosh or lamb's lettuce is very tender and very delicately flavored. Its small, curved, pale, and dark green leaves have a slightly nutty flavor. 
Because its flavor is so delicate, mosh should be combined only with other delicately flavored greens, such as Boston or bib lettuce, and dressed sparingly with a light vinaigrette dressing. Sorrel, sometimes called sourgrass, has leaves similar to spinach in color and shape. Sorrel has a very tart, lemony flavor that goes well with fish and shellfish. It should be used sparingly and, co and combined with other greens and salads. Sorrels can also be made into soup, sauces, and purees. However, so sorrel does not really stand up well to sautéing because the bright, fresh greens will turn dark and mushy. Spinach, like sorrel, can be cooked or used as a salad green. As a salad green, it's traditionally served tossed with hot bacon dressing. Spinach is deep green with a rich flavor and tender texture. Good quality spinach should be fairly crisp. Avoid wilted or yellow bunches. Sprouts are not salad greens, but are often used as such in salads and sandwiches. Sprouts are very young alfalfa or daikon or mustard plants. Alfalfa sprouts are very mild and sweet. Daikon and mustard sprouts are quite peppery. Watercress has tiny dime-sized leaves and substantial stems. It has a peppery flavor and adds spice to salads. Good quality fresh watercress is dark green with no yellowing. To preserve its freshness, watercress must be kept very cold and moist. It's often packed topped with ice. Individual leaves are plucked from the stems and rinsed just before serving. Watercress is a very delicate green and can be even pureed into a watercress type pesto as well. Many specialty produce growers offer edible pesticide free blossoms. They're used for salads and as garnish whenever a splash of color is appreciated. Some flowers such as nastrums and pansies are grown and picked specifically for eating. Others such as yellow cucumber flowers and squash blossoms are byproducts of the vegetable industry. Many flowers and blossoms are toxic, especially those grown from bulbs. Even flowers that would otherwise be edible may contain pesticides that can be harmful if ingested. Use only flowers grown specifically for use as food. Purchase edible flowers only from reputable purveyors. Basil, thyme, tarragon, oregano, dill, cilantro, majorum, mint, sage, savory, and even rosemary are used to add interesting flavor to salads. Because many herbs have strong flavors, use them sparingly so that the delicate flavors of the greens are not overpowered. Leafy herbs such as basil can, and sage can be cut chiffonade. Other herbs can be picked from their stems and added directly to salads or chopped before being tossed with the salad greens. Flowering herbs such as chive blossoms are used like ed other edible flowers to add color, aroma, and flavor. Salad greens are especially healthful foods. Greens contain virtually no fat and few calories. Salad greens are high in vitamins A, K, C, iron, and fiber, which makes them a power punch of veritable nutrition. However, garnishing salad greens with an oil-based dressing, a mayonnaise-based dressing, or a cheese adds fat and calories to a salad. The traditional salad bar that you might see at some restaurants, by the time you add the dressing and the various different accompaniments to it, the calorie count can be as high as eating a Big Mac. When purchasing lettuces and other salad ingredients, head lettuce is generally packed in cases 24 heads to a case. So it's really important that you understand how you're asking your vendor for that lettuce. Perhaps when you order romaine lettuce, you only want the romaine hearts. They need to know that, otherwise they're going to send you romaine 24 to a case, and you're going to have a lot of waste product in that. Or perhaps you want uh, your lettuce already cut for specific purposes. Uh, however you order your lettuce, make sure that you have proper specifications for that. Salad greens are simply washed, dried, and eaten. There are some companies out there that will pre-wash the salad greens for you, and you can use them straight from the bag. 
if possible, purchase salad greens daily. Using a vendor that uh, provides fresh greens either daily or every other day is really important uh, because when it comes to salad greens, a lot of these greens are very delicate and they will break down very, very quickly. Many types of greens are available pre-cut and pre-washed. Uh, the quality of a green once you cut it is going to change. Uh, for uh, iceberg lettuce, it degrades pretty rapidly once you cut it. Um, for romaine lettuce, instead of cutting romaine, I highly recommend tearing romaine. Romaine has large cell walls that if you cut, the water will escape from it and it will become mushy. If you tear it, it actually tears around the border of these walls and doesn't cut through them and it will stay crisper and better longer. There's lots and lots of leaves, uh, leaves and lettuces out there that follow the same suit. Market forms of uh, lettuces, conventionally grown greens are the best way to obtain salad greens is to purchase them from a natural season directly from a local truck farmer or specialty grower. Uh, local greens have a distinct flavor from the particular qualities of the soils in the area and the climate around it. This is a condition known as terroir, uh, which uh, you learn about when you deal with winemaking. Living greens are another alternative. Salad greens and herbs sold with their roots intact. The big advantages of living greens is their freshness. Because the root is still attached to it, they are still growing and still alive. If properly handled, they can be kept for weeks. The disadvantages are high cost, storage space needed, and environmental impact on their packaging. Uh, hydroponics is usually the way that these living greens are grown. However, some can be grown in the ground and then transplanted into a hydroponic environment. Pre-cleaned and fabricated greens are popular with consumers and food service operations. Pre-cleaned and cut salad greens save a lot of labor. Uh, they uh, have intensive handling makes them more perishable than their fresh conventional greens. Concern, certain customers may have allergic reactions to the antioxidants often used on pre-cleaned greens. The disadvantages are high cost, storage space needed, and environmental impact of their packaging. Although many companies are going to a package now that is vegetable oil based instead of petroleum oil based plastics. When evaluating the quality of salad greens, the most important quality in any type of salad green is freshness. A perfectly fresh salad green is turgid or swollen, shows no signs of bruising or rust, and has not bolted or sprouted. The disadvantages are high costs, storage space needed, and the environmental impact of their packaging. As you can see from the picture here, although the picture is a little fuzzy, you can see wilted greens on the left, and turgid or swollen greens on the right. That swollen means that they're full of moisture. There are some unique considerations when storing unprepped salad greens. Salad greens are among the most perishable foods in the professional kitchen. Correct handling during fabrication is essential to minimize waste. Most salad greens must be stored between 36 degrees Fahrenheit and 40 degrees Fahrenheit with moderate humidity. Do not store near apples, tomatoes, or bananas. And this is because all of these products, apples, pears, anything along those lines, they're going to give off a chemical called ethylene gas. This ethylene outgassing is used to quote unquote ripen fruit. An example of this would be if you put a green banana in a bag with an apple, then in a less than a day's time, you're going to have a ripe banana. Although it is not technically ripening, ripening because it is not still on the vine, it is actually in a state of decomposition or rotting. Uh, so this is not something that you want to happen with your greens. So you want to store them, you know, a couple of feet away at least if you can. Uh, keep commercially grown greens in their original containers. And then store loose greens in bus tubs with a covered uh, damp kitchen towel or a covered uh, damp uh, paper towels of some kind. And then refresh as necessary. Make sure that uh, it doesn't uh, sit in moisture. Uh, 
a good thing to do is if you have a couple of extra bus tubs, you can uh, drill holes in the bottom of one of them and then place it inside the other one that doesn't have the holes in them. And that's going to create a moisture pan that the water can drip off of in, into the bottom pan while you have your damp kitchen towel on top. Cleaning salad greens, with the exception of commercially pre-cleaned products, all salad greens must be washed, drained, and dried before they're consumed. Uh, the first step in this process is separating. You want to remove the leaves from the core and discard any unusual, unusable parts. That includes anything that has burns or uh, rust spots or is just generally not pleasant to look at uh, and wouldn't want to eat. The second step is washing. Thoroughly wash your salad greens uh, with the, is the utmost importance. However, you don't want to use soap on salad greens. What you want to use is a little bit of uh, what they call ozone wash uh, or vegetable wash if you use anything at all. Uh, most times you can accomplish this just simply by using ice water. Uh, and um, the process, what this is doing is two things. It's removing surface dirt. That's the big thing and uh, that surface dirt is going to fall to the bottom of the water. So you want more water in there than you have greens. You want it to literally float on top. And then the second thing is it's also going to suck some of that moisture into it, and it's going to keep the lettuce a little bit more crisp. But with that, you're going to add moisture, so there's something else we've got to do. We're going to drain them. We drain the salad greens to prevent them from becoming waterlogged. Drying is another step in the process. Drying can be done by laying them out on a towel or by using a uh, salad spinning uh, unit. Uh, these uh, salad spinners became really popular uh, on infomercials in the 1980s, but we've been using them in the restaurant for a long time. We've seen uh, we've got them as small as five gallons and as big as 30 gallons. Once the salad greens are cleaned and dried, they should be used as quickly as possible. If refrigerated for more than 24 hours, check for the moisture. You want to constantly check on them, make sure they're not drying out. If greens are still wet, rewrap re them in a dry linen. When greens are dry, transfer to a perforated plastic bag for storage. In this perforated plastic bag, they even have some that are designed for this, pur uh, this, purchase, this purpose. They will uh, allow... Um, moisture to get out um, by the exchange of air, but it won't allow it to dry out completely inside there. Uh, store loose greens in a bus tubs and cover with a damp kitchen towel as we've prescribed before. Most greens must be fabricated into bite-sized pieces that are easy to eat using only a fork. Fabricate greens as close to service time as possible. The classic method is to tear the greens into bite-sized pieces. Sturdy greens, such as iceberg and romaine, may be fabricated by cutting, although I recommend using the uh, tearing method for romaine lettuce as well. Simple salad preparations varies according to the service style used by the individual food service operation. So here are some different salad presentations. A la carte salad presentation and fine dining restaurant, simple salads are always prepared to order. Portion control is an essential skill needed for a la carte service. For sanitation purposes, salads may be tossed with a gloved hand or with tongs. Some guidelines for creating superior simple salads. Simple salads require the best ingredients. If you're going to make a simple, clean salad, you want to make sure that every ingredient on that plate is the peak is the best, is the most flavorful you can get. Choose greens and garnishes items uh, with that have texture, that have flavor, and colors that complement each other. Uh, you want to make sure that the uh, flavors are uh, complementary and sometimes even contrasting. So sometimes I may want a peppery green to mix with a sweet green like a, a Boston lettuce. And this is going to give me not only the textural difference, but also a little bit of contrasting flavor. Match the texture and flavor to the dressings of the character of the green. Here's, essential, here's an essential tip for everyone out there. When you are making a salad dressing, do not taste the salad dressing using a fork. Taste it 
with the greens you're going to serve it with. This is really important. If you're adjusting for seasoning in the salad dressing, you want to serve it. Just dip a little piece of lettuce in there and see how it's going to taste because it is going to taste different than it would on the fork than it does on the greens. Combine greens, dressings, and garnishes with care and discretion. Sometimes it is okay to serve dressing on the side for certain salads, but some salads it's best to dress and uh, have as a composed salad when it goes out, or a tossed salad, uh, as it's called, uh, before it goes out, because that way we can control the amount of dressing that goes on that salad. Romaine uh, is a... Um, perfect example of this when you turn romaine into a Caesar dressing you don't necessarily want your customer to drown it with the Caesar dressing because that takes away the crispness of the salad a little bit goes a long way in that particular situation enhance flavor with a little freshly ground black pepper added at the last minute you can also use just a little bit of coarse sea salt or Himalayan salt or any other kind of flake salt like that that you might like. But again, go very sparingly on that and know what your ingredients are. Uh, if you've got uh, salt in your vinaigrette, you want to be careful about over seasoning. Salads must be served on cool plates. So there is an axiom. Uh, if it is a cool salad or a cold salad, uh, hot food, hot, cold food, cold is the axiom that we use in the restaurant industry. So that means that if you're going to serve a cold item, serve it on a cold plate. However, do not, do not, do not store your plates in the freezer. Because what happens is they're going to come usually from the dish area, probably still warm, maybe with a little still moisture on them. And you're going to throw them in the freezer. And two things could happen. One, the plates could break and those plates are not cheap you know they, they, they're fairly expensive but more likely what's going to happen is you're going to get a little bit of moisture still on the plate that little bit of moisture is going to freeze into ice crystals and when you go to serve your salad on those plates even though the plates are beautifully cold uh, you're going to have those ice crystals in the bottom of the plate or bowl and as the salad sits in it, those ice is inevitably going to melt into, that's right, water. And now you've got water at the bottom of your salad, which is not a good look. Plan your salads in the context of the meal in which it will be served. So you want your salads to make sense. In France, they serve salad at the end of the meal. And this is meant to be as a digestive or digestif, as they call it, a aid to digestion at the end of the meal. In America, we tend to serve our salads as an appetizer or sometimes as an entree. And you want to plan that accordingly. When you're designing a salad for your menu, you want to make sure that it makes sense with the other items on your menu as well. So let's examine some of the different types of salads. A tossed green salad is an informal presentation. Place greens, garnishes, and dressings into a bowl and toss to combine. Garnishes can be anything from vegetables, fruits, nuts, cheese, cooked eggs, meat, poultry, fish, and croutons. The items are endless that can go on this. But the simple fact of tossing it together with the dressing, what does a couple of things, it uh, gets every bite coated with the dressing, and it allows you to control how much dressing goes on that salad, just like we had talked about the example of the Caesar salad. This salad sucks. In fact, most salads suck. Most salads suck because people don't know how to make salads. So here's how to make a salad that doesn't suck. First thing, don't use iceberg lettuce, unless you really want your salad to taste like a glass of water. Use a variety of other greens to get a better texture and flavor, like kale, spinach, arugula, basil, and cilantro. Yes, you can add herbs to your salad, and it's amazing. Second, chop everything very fine. The more you can fit on your fork, the better it will taste in your mouth. And here's an extra tip. A little finely chopped cabbage makes a world of difference. Third, you'll never get full just eating leaves, so add substance, like chicken, broccoli, avocado, berries, tomatoes, tortilla chips, seeds, and nuts. These things will make your salad more filling and more delicious, and therefore suck less. The last step is to add dressing, but not too much. 
Composed green salads consist of four parts, a base, usually a layer of salad greens, the body, the main ingredients, the garnish added to the salad for color, texture, and flavor, and the dressing, and this should complement rather than mask the other flavors in the salad. This kind of dressing is often served on the side. It's Natasha of natashaskitchen.com and today I'm going to show you how to make your new favorite salad. We're making a chicken cob salad. It is loaded with all of the best ingredients and you're going to love this dressing. So let's get started. The only cooking we need to do in this recipe is the bacon. So place a medium pan over medium heat and add six ounces of chopped bacon. Saute that until it's golden brown and crisp. And I love using the splatter guard to keep my stove and my clothes clean. I'll link to the one I have in the notes. Once your bacon is crispy, transfer that to a separate plate and set it aside to cool. You'll need one medium head of romaine lettuce or about five to six cups chopped. Once it's all chopped up, I love to put it in a salad spinner to wash it, then spin it dry. Salad spinners are brilliant for green salads. They save so much time and you'll never have another wet salad again. We've had a couple of salad spinners that have broken on us in the past, but this is the best one I've tried and I will definitely leave a link to it in the recipe notes. Spread your prepared lettuce over a large serving platter. This is gonna form the base of the salad. Now you'll need two large chicken breasts from a rotisserie chicken. And if you saw our most recent video, we shared how to cook a whole chicken in the Instant Pot. And it really is just the juiciest and quickest way to cook a whole chicken. And if you're in a hurry and wanna save even more time, you can use a store-bought rotisserie chicken for this recipe. Slice the chicken breast into bite-sized strips, then layer it over your romaine lettuce. Next, you'll need two large hard-boiled eggs and make sure you check out our tutorial on how to boil eggs perfectly every time. It is so easy. I'll leave a link to that in the notes. Cut your eggs into fourths and layer them onto your platter. Next, thinly slice one half cup of red onion. And I love using red onion because it's mild in flavor and adds beautiful color to the salad. Next, we'll need one cup of cherry tomatoes and cut each of those in half. It's easiest to do this with a serrated knife. You can chop up heirloom tomatoes when they're in season, but I found that cherry tomatoes taste great all year long. <laughs> next, we're gonna cut my personal favorite ingredient, well, next to the bacon, of course, <laughs> one large avocado. Remove the pit and peel the avocado, then slice into bite-sized pieces. When you slice, try to keep them in their rows for a prettier presentation when you transfer them to the salad. 
Add your rows of avocados to the salad platter. Next, layer on the rest of the ingredients that you've prepared. And for a Cobb salad, you can arrange things in strips or in little bunches like I am here. All right, we have the tomatoes and the purple onions on. Next, layer on your cooked crumbled bacon. And last but not least, add one half cup of crumbled blue cheese. I'm using a gorgonzola blue cheese, and if you prefer not to use blue cheese, a feta cheese would work here as well. And we're gonna finish this off with a little sprinkle of fresh parsley. Oh, that is just the prettiest salad, and it's totally making my mouth water. But before we can enjoy that, we're gonna make the most amazing balsamic vinaigrette, and all you need is a little mason jar. Add one third cup olive oil, and I'm using extra virgin because that gives this extra flavor. Get it, extra, extra, okay. <laughs> Balsamic vinegar, three tablespoons of that. And then we have our Dijon mustard. Just one tablespoon goes a long way. Press in one fresh garlic clove, and this adds fantastic flavor, so do not skip it. This is my favorite garlic press right here. I'll link to it in the notes. Every bit of garlic, I love garlic. And salt and pepper. Just a quarter teaspoon of salt and a pinch of black pepper. Put the lid on and shake, shake, shake. Until it's creamy smooth. That looks perfect. Mm. Beautiful. You just want to shake it enough so that the mustard incorporates really well into the dressing. Yum, yum. Okay, and then just drizzle it over the salad right before serving. That's exactly what we're gonna do. Yum. And add the dressing to taste. You don't have to use all of it. All right, and I am ridiculously excited for this taste test. <laughs> Can you see why? <laughs> so that's exactly what we're gonna do right now. Here we go, a little bit of everything. And of course, a lot of avocado. <laughs> And I personally like a lot of dressing on my salad, so I'm gonna add just a little drizzle more. Mm. <laughs> okay, here I go. Get a little bit of everything, which is hard because there's a lot of stuff in here. Okay, that looks reasonable. <laughs> it's a big bite. Mmm. Mmm. <laughs> and a little bit of everything else. <laughs> mm. Mm. I'm telling you, this dressing, it's amazing. Make it once and you will not want store-bought again. <laughs> it just pulls the whole salad together. You've got protein from the eggs and the chicken and the bacon. Does bacon have protein? I think so. <laughs> and the cheese, of course, there's cheese. And then you've got the fresh elements, juicy tomatoes, and then the purple onion, which I really like in here. It adds a lot of freshness. And the cheese, if you're not a big fan of blue cheese, you can totally use feta here, and it'll still taste really good. This is perfect for meal planning. This keeps really well in the refrigerator. And then you can just add the dressing as you go. This is so satisfying. It is a meal in itself, so beautiful for parties, and I hope it becomes a new favorite for you. If you guys love this, you have to try some of our most viral salads right over there and right down there. And make sure, make sure you click below to subscribe, and when you do, hit the bell icon so you'll get notifications every time we post a new video. We'll see you in our next video.
A bound salad is one or more ingredients held together into a cohesive mass. A large variety of salads can be created by combining ingredients, cooked meat, poultry, fish, shellfish, potatoes, pasta, beans, grains, or legumes can be bound with a dressing and garnishes. Vegetable salads are made from cooked or raw vegetables. They can be served on buffets as an appetizer or as a salad course. They must be successfully combined colors and flavors and textures to give it some kind of unique look and, and varying different tastes. Many are made by marinating vegetables in a method called a la grergue. Fruit salads are a refreshing addition to buffets. Now I'm not referring to the fruit salads in the can with the liquid and that's something entirely different. These can be served as a first course for lunch or dinner. They should be prepared close to service time. Fruits uh, do something called macerate, which means that when mixed with sugars of any kind, and sugars are naturally occurring in fruits anyway, then when mixed with this, they will leach out some of their moisture and that they'll get mushy. So you want to combine these as quick as possible to service time. Dressings for fruit salads are usually sweet. Liqueurs can be used as dressings as well, so maybe a nice uh, triple sec or Cointreau or something like that can be added to it, uh, to a, a nice fruit salad. Gelatin salads are made with ingredients that are coated with a flavorful liquid in which gelatin has been dissolved. These kind of got a bad rap in the 1970s and, and 60s uh, where everything was gelatin salads. Well, today we use them a little more sparingly because of that particular bad rap. Suitable ingredients are diced, sliced fresh fruits, drained canned fruits, and cooked vegetables, cooked meats, poultry, or fish, diced fruits, diced nuts. Um, these have kind of fallen out of popularity uh, to be quite honest with you, and are not used that often these days. Allow gelatin mixture to set slightly before adding main ingredients. So let's summarize and discuss some of the key takeaways from today. Salad is a single food or a mixture of different foods accompanied by or bound by a dressing. While not a requirement in salad, most salads are made up of some sort of lettuce uh, mixed with various other ingredients. The most common type of lettuces are butterhead, crisp head, leaf, and romaine lettuces. Although in the United States, they're easily outshadowed by the iceberg lettuce. Lettuces can add a sweetness or a bitterness to a salad, and even a punch of color providing a counterbalance to the other internal ingredients. Salads are categorized by composed green salads, bound salads, and others. Bound salads can be pasta, chicken, fish, any number of other ingredients, usually bound with a mayonnaise or other some kind of creamy dressing, like maybe a yogurt or a um, uh, creamed cheese style dressing. <laughs>